So Republicans are making attacks on gay people and transgender people central to their political agenda. And I have one question for them. What's the matter with them? Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the mega crowd. So a Mississippi Republican recently made news in his campaign as he's running for governor by calling for the execution of transgender people by firing squad. Yes, that's right. I am not exaggerating. And as always, I'll link to the articles down below. And here in my home state of Michigan, a Republican House candidate has vowed to introduce a don't say gay bill here in Michigan, similar to the one that recently passed in Florida. These are just two occurrences over the past week that demonstrate how the Republicans are doubling down on their opposition to gay people and transgender people in their effort to try to seize power in this country. What's especially disturbing about this movement is how the Republicans are justifying it. We had DeSantis's press secretary in Florida first raise this prospect by talking about grooming, that essentially anybody who stands up for gay people is assisting in the grooming of children for pedophilia. Now, this is a vile lie that has been repeatedly disproven by research. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the research, although I will link to some articles down below that describe it. But the point is that it's clear that someone's sexual orientation has nothing to do with whether, whether they're a pedophile or not. And drawing this association is a desperate attempt by Republicans to try to demonize a group who've been oppressed and abused. I mean, I remember back when I was in college in the 1980s, this was really at the beginning of the gay rights movement. And since I was politically active at college, I ended up making friends with a number of gay rights activists. One in particular who educated me as to the kind of oppression that they had faced for something that they can't control. And ever since then, it has really struck me. I mean, how does what someone does in the privacy of their own bedroom affect me and my life? If one person decides to have a relationship with a male, while I decide to have a relationship with a female, that has absolutely no impact on my relationship or my life in any way, shape, or form. We sometimes refer to this as homophobia, but that really seems like it understates the problem because it's not really so much a fear of gay people as it is a hatred of them. And essentially, really, it's just a way for Republicans to incite their base and to get them to come out and vote. Because we all know nothing incites Republicans more than someone to hate. Now, I think there's one thing that's important to clear up, by the way. The defenses some Republicans have raised for these don't say gay legislation is that they are simply aimed at protecting children who really shouldn't be exposed to any kind of talk about sexuality at their tender age. But the reality is, in Florida, that kind of talk to young children is already prohibited. So why is there a need to make it explicit that one cannot talk about gay people with children who are third grade and under? What's more is it's important to note that the language is very broad which frankly, with any other Supreme Court, I would expect to be ruled as unconstitutionally broad, frankly, because laws need to be specific about what's going to result in someone having legal liability. You can't make broad statements that can then be applied in a variety of circumstances. That's the way the law works. But this legislation makes such broad statements that virtually any teacher or anyone really mentioning gay people within the context of an educational institution could result in severe liability. So claims that this bill is really aimed at protecting children are quite disingenuous. Really what this legislation is all about is about riling up the hatred of the Republican Party for gay people. Now, it's worth noting that while this strategy might appeal to some of the Republican base, overall, it's a big loser. One of the most amazing transformations that has occurred throughout my life is how America has transformed from being essentially an anti-gay nation, to being one which is extremely tolerant. A recent poll by Pew demonstrated that 61% of Americans now favor gay marriage, whereas only 31% oppose it. That's nearly a 180-degree change from people's attitudes back in 2001, just 20 years ago. I never would have expected back in the 80s and 90s 
that the attitudes of Americans would change so dramatically. But yet here we are. In fact, what's even more telling is when they break out the results by party. Yes, it is true that Democrats and those who lean Democratic tend to be much more supportive of gay rights than Republicans. But the surprising finding to me is that 47% of Republicans support gay marriage. That's within the margin of error of a majority. What's even more shocking is when you look at the breakdown by religious affiliation. While it is true that the unaffiliated are most supportive of gay rights with 79% support of gay marriage, white mainline Protestants support it with 66% of the support. And Catholics, my religion, support it with 61%. Indeed, the only group that really has a problem with gay marriage are, get this, white evangelical Protestants. There we are again. I think Republicans are taking the Virginia governor's race as evidence that this is a good issue for them to run on. But evidence shows that the Virginia governor's race really had very little to do with get Glenn Youngkin's arguments that he was trying to protect the rights of parents. That might have ginned up the base somewhat, but the bigger issues were, number one, the fact that Democrats, as the party in power, suffered from the traditional midterm curse, that President Joe Biden, a Democrat, of course, has been suffering from relatively low favorability ratings ever since the withdrawal in Afghanistan, and more particularly, I think, the increase in inflation, and that, frankly, Terry McAuliffe was a flawed vehicle for the Democrats. He ran a mediocre campaign, and he was really another one of those Clinton moderates to take us back to that era, which really isn't what Democrats are looking for nowadays. I think what's more telling is what happened in New Jersey, where you had a very progressive Democratic governor who was reelected. Granted, he was weighed down by those other factors that I just mentioned, but he was able to hold off the Republicans, at least in part because of his progressive views. So what can be done about this movement to hate gay people and transgender people? Well, in my view, the only thing that can happen is a thorough repudiation at the ballot box. And it's really essential that all gay people, transgender people, and their allies realize how much is at stake in this next election. You see, the problem is that as people gain rights, they start to essentially forget about the difficulties that they got in achieving those rights. A great example is Peter Thiel, a gay man married to his husband, thanks to the activism of gay rights activists over the years, who is an active supporter of Donald Trump and has donated substantial amounts of money to Republican candidates, including a multi-million dollar contribution to right-wing Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Ohio, J.D. Vance. I mean, we can see this attitude so often on the playground, where the kids who are bullied, as soon as they can find someone lower on the totem pole to bully, rather than finding common cause with them, they turn around and start bullying that other person. It appears to be a base human instinct that we need to overcome. Rather than taking the approach of, oh, we've got ours, now screw everybody else, Everybody needs to realize how fragile the rights that have been earned are. That just as quickly as Republicans can take away the right of black people to vote, they can take away the right of gay people to marry. And as is evidenced by the recent actions of Republicans, it doesn't matter what the majority of Americans think on that issue. Well, there is another example of a similar issue where Republicans are trying to motivate their base, and that's abortion. And here's a great example of where they're about to take away some hard-earned rights. Why don't you check out this other video of mine where I discuss its prospects at the Supreme Court and the harm that could result from the actions that Republicans are taking to deny women their rights. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.